Hey everyone, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jans from New Center Prime, and I'm back in front of a camera because we have a lot of things to talk about this week. But today, I want to talk to you about something that came across my desk over this past weekend. But I kind of let it sit. I kind of let it ruminate because I felt like we needed more information. And that is, I guess, what I, I hate using this term because it, it really underestimates or overestimates the impact of Watergate and what it means. But for lack of me having zero creativity, we're going to call this Switch Bengate. Now... The Nintendo Switch has had issues with it since launch, right? There have been issues with the left Joy-Cons that Nintendo has acknowledged. It's it's apparently not a defect, but they've acknowledged it's a thing due to a manufacturing variation. Uh, remember, not a defect. <laughs> so uh, I talked about that in another video, which you can find down uh, a link to down below. But uh, they also have had things like the, the screen scratching from the dock because the screen itself is plastic and the dock is plastic. So plastic on plastic that creates scratches. Um, but th those are relatively minor issues. Nintendo's willing to fix the left Joy-Con one absolutely for free. And, uh, the screen one, just buy a screen protector, any old screen protector, whether it's one of those cheap film ones, which aren't very good, by the way, or whether you opt for a third-party tempered glass screen protector, which I will link to my own screen protector down in the description as well. Um, this bend gate is a little more serious because... This can lead to hardware failure, right? When the left Joy-Con isn't working correctly, you can still connect it to the system and use it in portable mode and everything works fine and dandy. Uh, when the screen is scratched, you can still play games, whether in docked mode or undocked mode. It's just a scratch. Uh, bend gate is where the switch itself is literally bending. And what appears to be happening, uh, at least at first glance, is that the system is heating up so much that it's causing the plastic and the metal inside of it to physically bend. And while this has not actually destroyed any systems as of yet, it is something that obviously uh, we're only a month out from launch, long haul could, could be a cause for concern. And that, that's the initial reaction. Reddit was blowing up on this, a uh, thread on NeoGAF was blowing up on this, and one particular user named, named Dinehart. Uh, posted a response, and granted, we have to take this with a grain of salt because we can't confirm or deny whether or not this person has the experience he claims. But this is what he does say, and that and that is that he is really familiar with the plastic plastification process. That I totally said that wrong, by the way. Um, and he can say with 100% certainty that the systems that are bent came like this out of the box. Now, it is entirely possible that this happened because, I mean, you get the switch, you look at it, the first thing you're looking for is not the, oh, is it bent? I mean, even the bends that we're seeing are, are a few millimeters. So, you know, how, mu how many of us took the switch out of the box, sat it down, put it on a flat surface we knew was completely even and level, put a level on top of it, put a ruler on top of it, and actually saw if it was um, bent or not when we got the system. Now, we do know that there are some docks that are bent, uh, but they shouldn't be able to bend your system. I, I'm saying shouldn't. I'm not saying can't. But based on what I know about plastic, it should not actually affect the system. Anyways, so this is what he claims. He claims out of the box that it would have been bent and that one of two things occurred. Either one, the mixture during the fill process was off, causing issues during the cooling process. And this causes the integrity issues like thin zones, brittle areas, etc. The casing itself on most of these seem to be fine, however. So outside of a few cases, I do not think that this is what is causing what we are calling switch bend gate. Uh, the second possibility is that the cooling process itself, if the manufacturer hastens the cooling process and does not allow for the casing to set before, inject, uh, before ejection, the product will most likely warp. During my time in the plastication industry, there were QA tests for these type of things, so I'm guessing these meet the manufacturers and Nintendo's specifications for retail. And he says, to add, I'm sure the switch casing was giving a hardener during the fill process. So while it probably takes around 700 degrees to initially melt, it will take much more than that to break down once bonded together after cooling. Likely scenario is that the case would burn, wouldn't melt due to the additive. I highly doubt the switch gets that hot. So the dock, 
somehow molding it as the player is playing is very highly unlikely. I would go as far as to say impossible. 100% straight out of the box. If the plastic was that pliable while warm, I'm sure there would be finger indentations in the back of the switch. So he went on to say this back on the third. Everything he's saying seems to line up with how plastication works, which is how plastic products are made. So since everything seems to check out, it does seem really highly unlikely that, because uh, the initial claims were that this person had played it basically entirely in dock mode and the dock itself was, wasn't was 100% like straight. You know, like there was a slight lip on one of the ends, which I looked at my own dock and I think uh, it might be a millimeter off, maybe, but if it is, it's so slight, I can't really tell with the naked eye. Um, but, you know, some other people's docks are more pronounced. And I guess the idea here is that with the system sitting in there running at full capacity, heats up so much, it kind of molds to the dock, and then there's your bend. And all the bends seem to be happening on the right side. So another popular theory besides the, the dock magically molding the system is that the plastic is merely being bulged out because the battery itself is overheating, and when batteries overheat, they often expand. When you see batteries that have exploded, say you have AA batteries in a controller, and they exploded, and you see battery acid, that's because the battery expanded, and then couldn't, obviously the metal wasn't built to hold it, and it exploded. It got too hot. So it is possible that that was the case. However, the battery is located on the left side of the switch, not the right. We know that from iFixit teardowns. So that means that the fact that it's the right side having the issue is not the left, that that's not what's happening. The battery is not getting overheated and expanded. We also know that the switch itself, even at its hottest point, uh, based on testing, which the hottest point is right where the fan is, because all the heating exhaust goes right there, and then the fan blows and cools it and blows out the system. So that's the hottest point in the whole system, that that only reaches, I, I believe it was something like 50 degrees or 55 degrees, uh, something very reasonable. Uh, for those who don't know, like CPUs and GPUs, they thermal throttle at like between 80 and 95 degrees, somewhere in there. Uh, so 50 degrees isn't that bad. It's not even that hot to the touch. I've never had my switch personally get that hot to the touch, whether it was docked or you know undocked. And uh, that's certainly well below what he claims needs to happen for it to even melt, which is 700 degrees. Um, so, and as he says, based on what they would make it harden with, it would start on fire before it was melt. And you could actually test this out. If you, uh, you shouldn't do this because burning plastic is really bad for the environment, but as a kid, I did this. Uh, if you ever throw a piece of plastic into the fire, not, not styrofoam, but like actual plastic. Like if you take, um, you know, a, a plastic chunk off a toy, right? You throw it into the fire. If you watch, it'll, it'll melt just ever so slightly and then kind of burst in flames. And that's because it's more likely to burst in flames first. It's just the process is happening so quickly at once in that fire that it looks like it's happening at the same time, but really it started on fire before it started to melt. So that, again, all this stuff is easily verifiable. So other people went on to say that, you know, that this, that, that can't be right, right? Like there has to be more to this, this bend gate. Uh, because multiple people are, are reporting this, including some journalists that have backed it up and said, hey, I didn't think it was an issue. Then I went and looked at my switch and sure enough, it is bent. Um, so, you know, this kind of became an issue because journalists that had review copies of the Switch, uh, the review units have, are backing it up. So then Dinehart went on to say, I'm trying to tell you guys that this is not an issue. It's purely cosmetic, although depending on the severity, it could contribute to scratch screens. Obviously, if your system is bent and it's putting more pressure onto the plastic when it's sliding in, it's going to cause more scratches to the screen. Um, look at any piece of plastic and it will have some type of warping, flashing, expanding, etc. As long as they function, Nintendo and the manufacturer will pass it, and any company will, through their QA process. The only thing that is not acceptable is a failed integrity test. Flashing can be manually removed, and I'm sure they have plenty of people for just that. Warping and expanding product, their machines and dyes, I'm sure, compensate for these vari variations in the molding process, although there is a limit to what is acceptable. Obviously, the thing looks like a, like a crescent moon, and <laughs> they're not going to send that out to, the, uh, out to retail. Um, I guarantee that this is a byproduct of trying to meet demand, fast cooling times, possibly improper filling process, and not letting the product set 
in a proper environment can cause problems. In this case, I'm sure they are cutting corners in the cooling process to meet demand, which makes sense. Essentially, the quality of the system, um, as we can see with the left Joy-Cons, with the variations in the manufacturing process, is held back a little bit so they can produce more of them and get them out faster and get it out to the public and get it to you. And that these defects, if you even want to call it that, are that they're, they're cosmetic. They're not um, anything that negatively impacts your system. The heat of your system is not causing this. So chances are... Your switch was like this out the, out the gate. And I guess the best way, if, if you want to make sure you don't get a bent system, because I, I personally don't care. If, even if my switch was bent, it is not. I checked. But even if my switch was bent, I wouldn't really care. Because I know how plastic works. And it's got plastic backing. And there's metal underneath that plastic backing. And I have not seen any reason to fear that this causes any issues for me personally. Uh... It's completely overblown. And while a serious issue, if this was caused by the system itself overheating, uh, that's not what's happening. So I, I've seen some other people out there like Rich at Review Tech and a, a, a select few other YouTubers out there uh, kind of go into detail about how this is a big concerning thing. It's really not. And I every day kind of look for things that might be wrong at Nintendo. Uh, it might be worth criticizing the Switch for because I've been overly positive about the Switch. And I, I almost feel like too positive. Like there's got to be some negatives besides the fact that they're, the next big game isn't out till the end of this month. But uh, this isn't one of them, right? Like this is at least uh, if from everything I can dig up on my own uh, based on the details provided by this NeoGAF user. I cannot find anything that would suggest that this is anything but the way the product arrived to the end user. And the bends are so slight that it's something that you wouldn't have noticed out of the box. So a switch bend gate is, is nothing, sorry to say. I mean, I guess I'm not sorry to say. Isn't that a good thing? Like, if your switch is bent, it's not a big deal. Uh, now, if you're someone who obviously wants a perfectly flat, perfectly straight switch that didn't have, you know, maybe some corners cut at manufacturing, obviously the first thing to do is to open up the product at, like immediately after you purchase it and look at it. And if it's bent, ask for an immediate exchange. Uh, if it's not, you know, if you do it later, you could try to exchange it, but sometimes they might say, oh, well, how do we know you didn't do that, etc. You know, the best way to do it is right there in the store right, right after you purchase it. Uh, but... It is what it is. I don't have any issues with my Switch. I Knock on wood, been very fortunate. This is Nathaniel Ruffle Chance from Nintendo Prime, signing out.